Hi everybody, Mr. Farrell here for our next interactive read aloud. This one is called Between Earth and Sky, Legends of Native American Sacred Places, and it's by Joseph Bruchak and Thomas Locker. Um, I just got finished reading it for the first time myself, and I think you will enjoy it greatly. Um, I want to ask, before we even start, as you read, I want, you to, I want to ask you to think about places you find special. It can be a high point uh, where you can see what feels like forever. It could be a point that's in your uh, space in your life that's quiet where you can collect your thoughts. I want you to think about special places to you and what makes them special. And we're going to come back to that later. But let's read Between Earth and Sky, Legends of Native American Sacred Places. Here we go. We have our title page. We have our copyright is 1996. Our dedication for my sons, Jim and Jesse, whose hearts hold the seventh direction. And for my son, Joshua. That seventh direction is interesting, especially because it's capitalized. And this about this book is really going to help us understand that better. About this book. Many years ago, Black Elk, a famous Lakota medicine man, was talking to a writer named John Nyhart about sacred places. Harney Peak in the Black Hills of South Dakota, said Black Elk, is the center of the world. Then, after thinking a moment, Black Elk added, but anywhere is the center of the world. Hmm. The landscape of North America is filled with places that hold deep, sacred meanings to the native people. Some are locations where special ceremonies took place. Other places are related to stories from long ago. Many of those sacred places are connected to lessons that we all need to hear. Western culture speaks of four directions. Native American cultures throughout the continent recognize seven. There's our seventh direction. There are the cardinal directions of east, south, west, and north, directions that correspond to our life cycle of birth, youth, adulthood, and the time of being an elder, respectively. Then there are the directions of earth and sky. These six directions are easy to locate. The seventh direction, however, is harder to see. It is the direction within us all. The place that helps us see right and wrong and maintain the balance by choosing to live in a good way. Between Earth and Sky is a book about some of the special places that are sacred to Native people. It is also about learning where and how to look. When we learn this, we will not miss seeing the beauty that is around us and within us as we walk between Earth and Sky. And we have the author and illustrator signatures there. Let's keep going. Little Turtle and his uncle, Old Bear, were walking. Little Turtle knew his uncle had many things to teach him. This water is another of the gifts from Kitse Le Mukong, our creator. It cleans our bodies and our minds and sets our spirits on the right path to do things the way they should be done. Little Turtle understood why his uncle had brought him here. They had come a long way to visit Mahi Kadnechtwek, the Hudson River land where his Delaware ancestors had lived. Long ago, those ancestors had to leave this place, but he remembered his grandmother saying to him more than once, Our bodies left, but our hearts will always live here. It is a sacred place for us. Uncle, Little Turtle said, What is a sacred place? Is this the only sacred place? Old Bear stopped and knelt and traced a circle on the soft earth. There are sacred places all around us, he said. They can be found in all of the seven directions. They are found in the east and in the north, in the south and in the west, as well as above, below, and the place within. Without those places, we lose our balance. Are Delawares the only Indian people with sacred places? Uncle Old Bear smiled. No, little turtle. Everyone has sacred places. Later today at the powwow, we will see native people from all over this continent. Let me tell you about some of their special places. Old Bear placed his hand again on the earth and drew a cross in the circle. We'll begin, he said, touching one of the arms of the cross, just as the sun starts every day. We'll begin in the east. Hmm. Most of these directions that Old Bear told us about, north, south, 
east, west, above, below, are pretty easy to figure out, to imagine. But what do you think he means by the place within? What would you say he means by the place within? What direction is that? What does that mean? Something to think about. I once knew a man who came from the land where the light of dawn first touches the shore. Long ago, he said, a giant lived with his people, a friend to them. That giant's name was Moshap. Moshap brought them wood and caught food for them, cared for them as if they were his children. But the people forgot. They were not thankful. Then one day the creator spoke to Moshap, saying, You have done enough. Now the people must learn to take care of themselves. Moshap saw that his work of helping the people was done. He turned himself into a whale, a great white whale that swam off to the east, beyond the cliffs glowing bright with the light of the dawn, which shows us the strength brought by every day. And that is the tale about this place that Old Bear tells us, but we also have some labels here of the direction, and also it, I have to look in the back of the book to find this out. This is also the culture, the Native American or Indian tribe or a group of people that finds this place sacred and also that kind of is from this area. And this is the Wapanoag. To the north live the Longhouse people, near the edge of the falls called Neaga. They sometimes spoke of the thunder beings who lived in a cave beneath the falls. When a child wanted to give thanks to the thunderers for the gift of rain, he would put an offering in a canoe and put it in the river to float over the falls. One day, a young woman alone in her canoe was crossing the river far up from the falls when she lost her paddle. The current was swift and she found herself swept away. This brave young woman had always been a friend of the thunderers, giving them gifts with each new season. So as she fell, she did not scream or cry. In trust, she asked calmly for help. The thunder beings saved her life, catching her safely in their blanket. Then the chief of the thunderers asked that young woman to be his wife. She agreed, and to this day, the Seneca say that when the rumbling voices of the thunder beings roll across the sky, the brave young woman is keeping watch, reminding us that every gift we give gives us back a blessing. And this is from the north, the Seneca people. An interesting thing about this story is that the story sounds terrifying. It's about a woman going over Niagara Falls in a canoe. But the illustration, if I can get it to focus, doesn't have that kind of terror or violence involved. It almost looks peaceful. Why do you think the illustrator did this very peaceful drawing? Hmm. From a friend who lives in the land of mesas, I heard a story of how, long ago, life was hard because there were many monsters. One of the worst was called He Who Kicks Them Over the Cliff, an ogre who waited on the mountain trail. Though many tried, no one could defeat him. There were two brothers, the hero twins. They decided to go out and fight all the monsters. Grandmother Spider said she would help them. She quietly crept up to the place where he who kicks them over the cliff was sleeping. Then she wove her web over his eyes. When the hero twins came, they pushed the ogre over that cliff. When he struck the earth, he became a great stone. Although some people call it El Capitan, the Navajo know that it once was that monster. It stands there to this day, a sacred symbol of how good can overcome evil. This is from the West, the Navajo people. Some of you have been to this next place. If we should travel far to the south, there in the land of mountains and mist, we might hear the story of how Earth was first shaped. Water beetle came out to see if it was ready, but the ground was still as wet as a swamp, too soft for anyone to stand. Great buzzard said, I will help dry the land. He began to fly close above the new earth. Where his wings came down, valleys were formed. And where his wings lifted, hills rose up through the mist. 
So the many rolling valleys and hills of that place called the Great Smokies came into being there. And so it is that the Cherokee people, aware of how this land was given, know that the earth is a sacred gift we all must respect and share. This is from the South, the Cherokee people. Far from here to the West is a desert land where Ayatoy, the elder brother, looked out and then said to the people, in this place you will live as long as you remember all around you is sacred. Though it seems to be empty and dry, the desert is always filled with life. Those tall cactuses that lift their arms up into the sky are ancient people who promise to always look over those chosen to live in this sandy place. The clouds in the sky are also alive. They are ancient beings who care for the people. They will answer with rain when you ask for their help. Here in the desert where the air is clear, you can hear the sound of blessing, rains, which come after the people pray, asking the clouds once more to bring the sacred moisture singing from their rain house on the eastern horizon. Then, as the aquatilo turns green and the saguaro cactuses bloom, they watch the cycle of life begin again. This is from the West, the Papago. There are also some places where our stories were shaped in the earth by people long ago. South of the great freshwater sea, in the place called Ohio, there is such a hill. There, a great earth serpent, like the spirit of water which give life, gives life to our crops, circles a hilltop shaped out of earth. Carried in baskets, it was made by the people who understood its meaning 2,000 years ago. It is so long that when you stand at one end of it, you cannot see the other. All that we know now about the sacred place is that the people once went there to pray. It helps us remember all of this earth is alive. And this is from the center, the Hopewell. Have you all heard of Serpent Mound in Ohio? It's not that far away from us. It's still there to this day. In the place where the great mountains rise up to the sky, Buffalo went to the humans and said, From now on you will be our slaves. That is not right, the humans replied. Our creator meant all to respect one another. We will prove we are strongest, Buffalo said. Let us have a race. The one who wins will hunt the other. So it was that they would race from the Black Hills to the Rocky Mountains, where buffalo, with buffalo were deer, antelope, and elk. Dog, eagle, and fountain, falcon chose to help the humans. The race began, and deer ran so fast that when man reached dog, he was far behind. Antelope drew further ahead, and but elk and eagle, as they raced each other, reached buffalo and falcon at the same time. Falcon circled up into the sky, and then, just as it seemed buffalo would win, falcon dove down to the top of the mountain. Since that day, to honor falcon and eagle, the people wear their sacred feathers. The faithful dog shares with the people their homes and their food. When the people hunt buffalo, they do so with that same respect the Creator wished for all beings. And because this is high in the mountains, this is above from the Cheyenne people. A Hopi friend once told me that the people came from another world beneath this world. Before that world, they lived in another and another one still, so that the world we live in today is the fourth one the people have known. Each time, it seems, things were going well until something happened that made things go wrong. People acted jealous. People fought one another. People didn't remember to respect the sacred. Coyote caused the greatest trouble when he stole the child of the water monster. When the water monster took back its child, the whole third world was washed over by flood. So the people left their old world behind. They had to climb higher to another safer place. Perhaps that great canyon in the heart of their lands was meant to remind us of those worlds that were lost before we reached this rainbow world that no one wants to leave behind. And this is from below, the Hopi people. It's about the Grand Canyon.
This is an interesting one because this is about people losing the balance and forgetting the sacred. So pay attention to this one in particular. No one lives today in the ancient houses built by the old people high up in the cliffs. People lived well then, safe from enemies while growing their corn and beans and squash in gardens watered by the ditches they made. But they say one man grew, grew too proud back then. He thought all the people should work for him. Though he was a leader, he forgot that those who lead should always think first of the people. For a while, the people did as he said, hoping one day his heart would grow kind. Instead, he grew crueler every day, until at last the people could stand it no longer. Their leader had lost the sacred balance, and so they would no longer serve him. They all left that city high on the cliff and went to a place where the people's lives were again as free as the flow of water. Now only the wind sings through the ruins of a place whose broken stones remind us that real power can only be held by those who ha whose hands are open. This is balance lost from the Wallapai. A long line of islands rests in the big lake our Abenaki cousins call Petonbak, the waters in between. Those islands are stones dropped from the hands of Odzihozo, the ancient one who shaped this lake when he rose from the land. Thunder beings lived on each of those islands, frightening the people with their shouts. Then a hero named Bedeguazo went to them one after another, asking them to live up in the sky because their great voices had such sacred, sacred strength they made all the people afraid. Bedeguazo said to the people then, Always show respect when you are on the lake, for those islands are places still owned by the thunder. Sometimes that which is filled with power is best known from a distance, not forgotten, but given respect. And this is balance held from the Abenaki. Old bear and little turtle stood together on the hill. My uncle, he said, I see now what you mean. Every place we go is a sacred place if we remember that we always carry the teachings with us. Old Bear nodded as he placed his hand on his chest. Little Turtle, he said, you understand. Here is where we must look to see the sacred places that are all around us. We must look within, through the eyes of our hearts. Everything is sacred between earth and sky. Hmm. And the book's not quite finished because we do have this excellent map of the places mentioned in the book, such as Lake Champlain and Niagara Falls, the Great Serpent Mound, the Great Smokies. We've got all kinds of – all the places they mentioned are here in the book under the names we know them, but also by their native names. And then we also have a list of where different cultures lived in the continents. And finally, we have a pronunciation guide, which I'm not going to read to you right now. So watch the other video to learn what your assignment is with this, where we're going to learn and discuss more about sacred places.